Hey, it's Brock here with Rock Hill Farms. Today we're gonna use a skid steer mounted auger to dig the holes to build the new bridge across the pond. So if you haven't been following along, we've added this island by digging out this side and expanding the pond. Then we put a bridge across from the island to this side. We put a windmill in the middle. The next step is we're gonna build another bridge from the island to the other side. And I'm really excited for how I think this is going to turn out, but there's a lot of work that has to be done to get us there. So I can tell the story as we go. So let's just get the, let's get everything marked out and get the auger on and get started drilling. This is our third year since buying the property. And this is by far the lowest the pond has ever gotten. And I'm not concerned about it because all the neighbor's ponds are way down and we have had a record level drought this summer and it's got to end at some point. I see a lot of ponds completely dry, so I'm confident this is going to fill back up in the spring just like it has the last two years. Okay, so first thing is the other bridge is about three foot wide. We want to center it on the width of this. So this is 10 foot wide. Minus three foot for the bridge, gives you seven. You split that seven, you got three and a half foot on each side of the bridge. So we're gonna come in three and a half foot and put a stake right here. We want to be three feet in this direction and then do our three and a half from the outside. Which puts us right here. Okay, so that is one corner of the bridge. So here will be our other corner of the bridge. So I have a sense of urgency to get these piers put out in the middle, but I'm going to put concrete here too. But that can wait because this, need, this out here needs to be done before we get any rain, because this is the only time that this center section's probably ever gonna be dry again. Okay, so this is the path the bridge is going to take. It's gonna be over 40 feet long. And the, the space in between the actual banks is 36 feet. So we're gonna split that into thirds, be before the first pier, between, and then after. So we'll go 12 inches from the edge of the dirt here, or 12 feet from the edge of the dirt, make our first mark. 24 feet, second mark, that's where the two piers will go. Same thing on this string. Then once those are in, basically all we've done is, is have points that are in a straight line. Then we will actually square the end of this off and make the whole thing square. But as long as we have equidistant points on straight lines, we should be good. I rented this auger even though I have a post hole digger for the tractor because I needed a 12 inch hole and my auger on the tractor is only 9 inches but also because I didn't really want to drive the tractor down this slope and the tractor is longer and I was afraid I wouldn't be able to get the auger in position. By the end you'll see that this project was mostly successful but I'm left with some questions I'm not sure how to proceed so this is one of those videos where I'm asking you guys for advice and feedback.
this clay is really soft and there's no risk of hitting any rocks. So it felt like I could have powered this auger right through a lot quicker than I did. But it's a rented attachment and this is my first time ever running one of these. So I just kind of took it slow and pulled it up fairly often to get rid of the spoils. So the first two holes went pretty smooth, and then I had to back up for the second set of holes, and that's where I ran into a problem, because the skid loader is sitting on a little bit of an incline, and it was hard to keep it from creeping forward, and just the angle of everything, it didn't want to drill a straight hole. not going to work very well digging with the machine on the hill so I need to turn around and face this way but I don't want to do that and knock dirt back in the hole so we're going to pull all this loose dirt away and I'm actually going to run the auger through again and try to pull more loose dirt out because the hole was broke up four foot deep but two foot of that is now loose dirt so really we just have a two foot deep hole practically. tape measure and see if we're 40 inches side to side from that other hole because if the length if it's too too close to that bank or too far this way is okay the rail just needs to set on it but we do need to be 40 inches apart from the center or from the center to center from the center of this hole to where you're at yeah to the center of where the bit is What would you call it? 40, 41? 42. So just a tiny bit that way. What's the other one? Center to center on the other two holes. Forty-one and a half. Okay, so I can dig right here. Because really, we can make the bridge any size and shape we want. We just need these holes to be the same distance apart. Right, yeah. I, I think that right where you're at is pretty close. 
Okay. bad but if you want to hit it again I'll do it one more time yeah We got the four holes exactly like I wanted. Everything would be perfect except that hole there is about a foot too far this way. I messed it up by trying to dig it while I was on a slope and then I couldn't correct it. Once that hole was there, I couldn't move it back eight inches. It's probably a way, but I didn't know how. So I'm gonna put the tubes in it now to hold the holes open. And then I'm gonna look at what's the next step to getting this from where it's at to where where I want it to end up. This is where I'm hoping you guys can give me some good advice. Okay, so what I want to do is I want the, the height of the bridge to be even with ground level right here. So we're gonna set, set the transit to ground level here and then match the top of all four of the sono tubes to that. Okay, so that one is basically perfect. Look, how are these supposed to fit the same hole? I should have wobbled the holes out, but I'm not driving the skid loader back down here. So I'm gonna try to make the hole I try to make the hole a little bit bigger on this these last two with the shovel just scraping down the side Perfect. This one's perfect. That one's actually about an inch low. As you can see, this is an exact size. Always. Okay, so we've used the grade stick and we've got three of these level with each other. The fourth one needs to go down about five inches. I can either cut five inches of it off or I could go get another one that's a little bit smaller and it'll go right in. But let me see how much is below ground. 
Okay, so our concrete here is going to be four foot, 10 inches, because there's 10 inches, the hole is 10 inches deeper than the bottom of this tube. And at two foot, three inches above ground. So there'll be two foot, seven inches of 12 inch diameter concrete below grade. I think, I think this is going to do it. I really do. I've, I've had concerns about trying to put this out in a pond where all this is going to get soggy because this is going to be water level will be right here. Water level is going to be about a foot up these year round, maybe a foot and a half. So I think this is going to do the job. The concern I have left is the best way, when I pour concrete into these tubes, I need to leave something sticking out to anchor the steel to. So I'm going to go get some probably five inch angle that's like three eighths or half inch thick, like heavy, heavy angle for the base of this. Lay it across here and I'll, I'll probably put some all thread sticking up or some rebar or something and have holes drilled in that to set it over. So let me know your best ideas. If there's something better that I can use to anchor this down to the concrete. But beyond that, I really think this is going to do the job and make a stable foundation for the bridge. Then I'm going to dig out that side, a big area, probably eight foot wide, and make a uh, form, make a form in there, pour concrete there. I'll make a form on this side and pour concrete. And I'm actually thinking about building a two by six box around these four and then filling that entire box in with concrete. So these would never move if they're inside of a concrete box. And concrete's cheap. For all the work that's going into this and the money being spent on the bridge and everything else, concrete's so cheap. I could have this entire thing and all four of these be in concrete. So let me know your thoughts. I'm going to read all these comments and, and factor them in as I finish this. I'm hoping to have this, at least the rails across here within the next few days. So I appreciate you taking time to watch. Put links on the screen to a couple more of our videos, and I'll see you next time.